SEGA What is up everyone and welcome back to my Sonic the Hedgehog Marathon and today we're going to continue with the next game in the, in the marathon, which is Sonic Lost World. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let me just make sure everything's all, all good. Yeah, that all looks good. Uh, okay, let's see. Just gotta make, I'm just learning the controls real quick. Alright, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. So here you are, the first level in the game. We'll jump for longer to jump higher. Alright, so... Lock on cursor, jump toward an enemy with the target lock, jump again to do a homing attack after a homing star enemies. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is Sonic Lost World. This game came out, I believe, 2013. Exclusively for the Wii U. Uh, yeah, it came out exclusively for the Wii U. Did I use a list? Oh, there we go. Oh nice, there's a capsule here with animal. Ouch! Yeah, so this game came out exclusively for the Wii U and the 3DS. Um, came out in 2013. And the reason... Uh, so the reason for that is because Sega was... Okay, that's just basic stuff. Sega saw that, uh, you know, they were doing really popular on Nintendo consoles with Sonic Colors, and they just wanted to continue to capitalize on the Nintendo market. So that's why, that's why this game, yeah, that's why this game, uh, Yeah, so that's why this game is only exclusive to those consoles. There we 
there we go. Yeah, that's why this game is only exclusive to this console. Until, uh... I think only a few years after this game came out. They decided to make a port of it to the PC, which is the version I'm playing. Yeah, believe me, I never bought a Wii U. And I wasn't gonna buy a Wii U just to play this game. So, a little bit about the development of this game, I guess the way... So this game pretty much began development shortly after Sonic Colors, and they wanted to expand on Sonic Colors, uh, do things like extend the, the length of the, of the game, because you may remember that Sonic Colors was actually a really short game. So, they decided to make this game a bit longer, and they wanted to make the game a bit more unique. Change it up a bit, because as you can see, it is not like Sonic Colors, or Sonic Generations for that matter. Uh, pretty much after Sonic Unleashed, yeah, pretty much after Sonic Unleashed, uh... You s oh my god. Yeah, so pretty much after Sonic Unleashed, all the Sonic, pretty much the main Sonic games had been following the same gameplay formula of the modern boost formula that was introduced in uh, Sonic Unleashed. And yeah, this game, as you can see, does not follow that at all. And that's, uh, in terms of, like, this game, that's really all that's really all I got to say or that's really all I know about this game I also know another reason for this game being exclusive to Nintendo consoles is because around this time Sega uh, Sega formed an exclusivity deal with Nintendo where the next three games they would make were we're gonna be exclusive. Damn it. Yeah, the next three games that the next three games they were to make were supposed to be exclusive to Nintendo consoles, and so this game ended up being the first of the first game of that deal. Now, why did they port this game over to PC? I have no idea. But I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I did mention in Sonic Generations that this game is gonna be very different compared to all the other games in in uh, this plate or in this marathon that I've been doing. And it's not because it's not because the game is very different. No, no, no. It's because. This is the. This is actually the first time I'm playing this game ever. I have never played this game before. Like I and like I said, it's because. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, it's because I never owned a Wii U. When you reach the goal, try to jump on the capsule from a great distance. The further away you are, the more bonuses you will receive. Yeah. Wait, what the hell? So, like this? Oh. Yeah, I have never played this game before. Because I never owned a Wii U. I wasn't gonna buy a Wii U for this game. And... And I just realized something. <laughs> Hold on. Take it easy there. Oh, stay calm, little guy. 
Sonic no, and I, Tails will get your buddies you, okay? back. Sonic, no, no, did right. you get those animals back from Eggman? Uh, just the one container he tossed off his Eggmobile. What? Wait a minute, just the one? <laughs> Weak. I would have gotten them all back by now. Save the rest of them. Hey, what? Oh, Let me go. I hate to think what Eggman's doing to those poor things. I'm on it. Alright, here we are, next level, Windy Hill Zone 2. Normal play. Transformation 101, bunnies to bad nicks. boom, instant army. It needs to be a big army if I'm taking over the world below. You are quite. Mighty conquered. Yes, yes I am. I conquered you, didn't I? And with your help, I'll not only rule the world, I'll finally destroy that blue nuisance, Sonic! Eggman wants the little hedgehog destroyed. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like destroying something. That's what I like about you, Zaz. Always ready for a fight. Even before you know what you're fighting. <laughs> you bet! Bring it on and I'll rip it up! <laughs> Win or lose, I'll learn something about our enemy. Okay, yeah, so like I said, I've never played this game. This is actually the first time I'm playing this game ever. Yeah, this is actually the first time I'm playing this game ever. Oh my God. And it's actually a first for this. Yeah, I'd say this is a first because of all the games I've done on this channel, I believe I have played every single game, or at least every single Sonic game. Um, I'm gonna have to bring in my A game if I wanna mop the floor with this funny foot. Yeah, I have played every single Sonic game. Every Sonic game that I've played on this channel so far, I have already played once before. And I think there really is no exception. This is the only one I haven't played. And, uh, aside from the fact that, uh... Aside from the fact that... I didn't have a Wii U. Because... I found out that this game was on PC for like, a while now. And I could have played it on PC. But truth be told... I didn't want to and it's only because this game when it first came out I just I was just never really fond of it I like I saw gameplay for the I saw gameplay for this game back when it was first announced because of course you know new Sonic game I'm gonna be excited for that you know but then I saw the game, then I saw gameplay, and I was just like, you know what? I don't think I like this game. Yeah, I never liked this game. I mean, considering that I was really happy with Sonic Colors Unleashed Generations. I think I was really surprised that this was what they decided to do after Sonic Sonic Generation, you know? Continue to stay locked on. Yeah, 
me down, Taz! Looks like we have a boss fight here. Oh my god. Oh, okay. I should. That was easy. Stick in the hedgehog. That was easy. Yeah, I never played this. I never wanted to play this game. It just. I was just really. When it first came out, I was just really baffled. I mean, everyone was saying pretty much what. Every, the, the main complaint that everyone was saying about this game when it first came out was. This looks like Super Mario Galaxy. And I was like, you know what? That's exactly it. Why they dis- No, I was gonna say, why they decided to do that? I don't know, but I do know. It's because, you know, they wanted- They really wanted to- Sonic Team and Sega really wanted to appeal to the Nintendo crowd. And you know, obviously, Nintendo fans love Mario. And, and Super Mario Galaxy w was- was really one of the was a really good Mario game, you know, or I should say is a really good Mario game. I never played it myself personally. I know, I know, but it's just the fact that S Sonic Team really tried to make a, a Super Mario Galaxy clone with Sonic. Like, I don't know. The I don't know how I felt about that because the one reason. One of the reasons why I always loved Sonic was that considering that he was meant to compete with Mario when he first came out and whatnot, I liked how instead of just kind of following or I guess you could say trying to replicate Mario, Sonic Team and Sega really try to make something more unique. That's why that's why when, the, when Sonic first came out, uh, back like in the Genesis era of Sonic games, they their advertisements was always like Genesis does with Nintendo because they were basically trying to say that yeah, Sonic and our Sega consoles are much better. And just take a look look at the comparison between uh, like the early Sonic games. And the Mario games of the time. Press duck to bounce. So, like this. Okay. Why do I need to bounce? Oh. Yeah, I mean... I, that's the reason why they made Sonic like a speedster was because they wanted to show that the processing power of uh, yeah they wanted to show that the processing power of the of the Genesis was much faster than the than the SNES. That's why you know Sonic. That's why Sonic became popular. And like during that time when so Sonic first debuted, people said that Sonic or Sega was really winning the console rivalry with uh, with Nintendo because sure Mario was good. Mario, you could I, you could say that Mario set the standards for the platformers at that time, but what Sonic did was truly innovate 
Oh my god. Oh, I just died. Yeah, they truly innovated. Because, you know, Sonic's also a platformer, but they did a lot of things different. They were able to make a platformer that incorporated momentum and physics, which was something that Mario didn't really they didn't really do a lot of, you know, Mario's just your fun, simple platform. Nothing wrong with that. Mario's a good game. But Sonic, Sonic was always, always there to be different. Same thing with the, uh, same thing with the 3D era. I mean, you know, you know, a lot of people often praise Super Mario 64 for being like, revolutionary because you know it changed you know that was the first 3d mario game and they said oh people have always said it's a really great game and like to truly set the standard for what 3d games would be like or at least 3d platformers and i played i played super mario 64 and i gotta this might be a bit of a hot take if i gotta be honest but I feel like Super Mario 64 kind of is a bit overhyped. What the? And the reason for it is that Super Mario 64, like people say, oh, it's an amazing game and this and that. But if you ask me, it's essentially just the glorified collectathon. That's all it is. You pretty much you spent most of the game just collecting stars. Uh, you do different missions to collect the stars, but that, but that's about it. It's just different types of challenges. I don't know how to say it. You know, there's and the story. There's barely any story. The whole story of Super Mario 64 is that Mario gets invited to Princess Peach's house to eat some cake. She gets kidnapped by Bowser, and then you gotta travel to different worlds through paintings in the in the castle to get stars so you could take on Bowser and save Princess Peach. Um, you know what? I'm gonna stop using I'm gonna stop using this wisp. It's not helping me whatsoever. Uh, whereas the first, the first true 3D Sonic game was Sonic Adventure, and I mean just the story in that game already was like much more grand than than what Mario did with Mario 64. You know, Mario 64 is just it's essentially just defeat Bowser again, save the princess. You know, same story, true, true again. I know Sonic Adventure, you can boil it down to like, oh, it's just fighting Eggman and stopping his plans again. Yeah, that's true, but at least there are more characters involved. And you have characters like Gamma, Amy, Tails that grow, that actually have character development throughout the, their respective stories. And s same thing with, uh, with like the villain, like, I know Eggman's the main villain, but as, but Chaos is Chaos is, is a like secondary antagonist of that game, and he goes on to basically betray Eggman and be the main villain. And you have the final boss with him, which is like that epic battle where you turn into Super Sonic. And in terms of gameplay, I mean Sonic Sonic Adventure is very action oriented. Now, I mean, I know it's not fair because Mario isn't a game that's known for being very action-oriented, fair enough, but, I don't know, it's just, I always hear that, I always hear that tired argument that people always, that critics, or I should say that critics of Sonic always say that, oh, Sonic had a rough transition into 3D, and it's like, how can you say that? How can you say that when you got a great game like Sonic Adventure, sure it has its flaws, what game doesn't? Well, very few games don't, but yeah, it has its flaws of course, but it's a really good game. And I'm pretty sure these are the same people who will say, 
Mario 64 is amazing. It's like the best, one of the best 3D platformers ever. And I just gotta say, I mean, look, it's good, but it is a bit, it's nothing too spectacular. It is a collect-a-thon, and a lot of 3D platformers of that time were simply collect-a-thons. The hell? Uh no. So my controller just crapped out for some reason. Hold on, I gotta I gotta fix this. I don't know why my controller just stopped working all of a sudden. Like the keyboard works. I just pressed that. Okay, got my controller working. I don't know why all of a sudden it just crapped out on me. Oh, that's not gonna work. Ah, I keep missing. There we go. Yeah, you could no doubt tell I'm not a huge fan of collectathons. I mean, it's because all you really do is just go around collecting things. I mean, I guess if they're if they're fun, if they're fun, sure. But I don't know. I don't really know a lot of collectathons that are fun. I do, I just personally prefer my platformer with more, a little more action. That's just me. But, kinda went off on this bit of a tangent talking about Mario and Sonic. Don't turn this, yeah, this is one I just did. But, yeah, the whole point of me saying all that was, uh, oh, I figured. Hey! I've been looking for you, Baldy McNose Hair! Who are your friends? <sighs> friends? These are nobody's friends. They are the Deadly Six, and they are your worst enemies. Zaz, show this blue pest how you do things up here. <sighs> With pleasure, I've been itching for a fun all day. <laughs> I think you're itching because you need a bath. Huh? Are you disrespecting me? Maybe. I'm gonna mess you up! I'd love to stay and watch him disassemble you, but I have business to attend to. <laughs> I know the perfect spot to take care of you. That's funny, because I know the perfect spot to kick you. So I think for sure this is like the boss. Boss stage. Oh, uh, like I was saying, you know, yeah, I always liked Sonic because when it came to Sonic, Sonic dared to be unique where a lot of other games just. Yeah, where a lot of other games were just content with. Uh, Yeah, other games are just content with replicating or imitating, but Sonic always dared to be different. I mean, of course, two varying results, but, you know, you gotta throw stuff at a wall and see what sticks to find what works. You know, experimentation is always key. You know, the, the reason why Mario doesn't have a lot of... The reason why Mario doesn't have, like, very critically panned games like Sonic does is because it's because Mario 
Mario is... What Mario has is consistency. Whenever uh, Nintendo makes a good Mario game, they pretty much tend to just stick with that and just build on it a bit, you know? Innovate. Innovate... Yeah, innovate on what works. Of course, it's for that reason why you look at Mario games and they're not very that different or unique. Like, you have different kinds of Mario games, right? So you got the main Mario Bros. game, which plays like your classic platformer. Even like the 3D Mario games, so like Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Mario Odyssey. They all play very similarly with different, uh, with different gimmicks. And then, what else? Paper Mario series are essentially the RPG, and you got the 3D, the Mario 3D games, like 3D Land and 3D World. And then of course you can't forget the spin-offs like Mario Kart and stuff like that. But like, see, this, but that's my point. Mario has its own set of like different types of games that you normally expect from a Mario game. Whereas Sonic, I mean, you've seen all the games I've played so far. Like since since the inception of Mar uh, of Sonic. Sonic has had very different games, and that's why with the fan base, you have fans who have their own style of Sonic games that they like, you know? You have the fans who like the classic Sonic games. You have the fans who... Oh, damn. You have the fans who like, uh... You have the fans that like, uh, the adventure style of game. You have fans who like... Let's go. Oh, I see. Yeah, you have. Yeah, fans who like the adventure game, and then, and then you also have. Uh, oh, what the hell? Oh, that's annoying. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, and then you have the fans who like the modern adventure or the modern boosting formula of Sonic games. Personally, I'm a fan of all of them. My favorite would definitely have to be the. Definitely my favorite would have to be the boost. That's my favorite like gameplay style of Sonic. So yeah, and I know Sonic has, it has its blunders, but it's also thanks to those blunders that we also got some really good games. Look at Sonic Unleashed. I feel like if Sonic 06 would have never been the dumpster fire that it was, or that it is, I should say that it is, because it's not like it got better. Uh, I don't think we ever would have gotten Sonic Unleashed, and I love Sonic Unleashed. I've already told you many times that it's my favorite Sonic game ever. And if Sonic 06 had to fail for us to get Sonic Unleashed, then I definitely... I definitely would take that than having a good Sonic 06 game. This, even though I do believe Sonic 06 could have been a very amazing game if they didn't choose to rush the hell out of that game. But anyways, yeah, I don't know. 
Not, wasn't really a huge fan of how they decided to really just kind of imitate Nintendo with this game. So yeah, that's my thoughts. That's why I haven't played this game. And I wasn't going to, but... See, when I first came up with the concept of this marathon, I was wondering... Lost World, unfortunately, is considered a main Sonic game, and I was just like, well, you know what, if that's the case, I do have to play, like, I do have to play this game. With the spin-offs, you know, I could kind of get by because they're spin-offs, but this game is a main Sonic title, so I had to play it, but when I was coming up with the, when I came up with the idea of this game, or of doing this marathon, I was thinking to myself, hey, so what am I gonna, oh man, what am I gonna do with Lost World? Because at that time, to my knowledge, Yeah, I was thinking, at that time, I was under the impression that, uh, that Sonic Lost World was, was only on Wii U and 3DS, and I wasn't gonna buy a Wii U just to play this game, so I was thinking, you know what, maybe I could skip this game, I have a good excuse to skip it. But I saw that it was on PC and I was like, oh, okay, now begs the quish question. Alright, we good to go or what, Tails? Hmm. I've built a TV out of paper clips. Yeah. And reprogrammed a supercomputer using dishwashing detergent and a toothpick. I know. So look, fixing a propeller on a biplane? That's about as difficult as taking a nap. Okay, I didn't need your whole life story. A simple good to go would have been cool. All right, good to go. Cool. So it looks like we unlocked a new zone in the Lost House. Desert Ruins. 